Hello, I'm V, and this is my 1979 Chevy G10 cargo van that I'll be converting into my new tiny home. Van. Smell. I will insert some background clips of what it looked like before this because this is it gutted. So this is the first video I took of my van when I purchased it back in July of 2020. I was living in Sun Valley at the time and I saw an ad on Craigslist um, for this van down in Long Beach and I ended up meeting up with a sketchy dude named Danny who sold this to me without a title. So yes, I had a bimbo moment, but that issue has since been resolved and she is fully mine. As you can see, the original interior was super groovy with these deep cherry carmine reds and shag rug built-in bed partition. Um, but recently I decided I wanted to redo the build one, for that sense of pride, but two, and mainly, was because the insulation was not really doing what insulation does. I lived in Yosemite and Monterey over the summer and fall, and at nights it was just getting unbearably cold, so I figured I should refurbish her. Surprisingly, when I ripped up all the flooring, there was not a lot of rust, maybe like one spot or two, but there was a shit ton of dirt, so I'm going to have to scrub it clean. And then I'll be filling in all the drill holes from the previous flooring with some fiberglass cloth uh, so that I can install my new subflooring. I went in, scrubbed the entire interior, and I'm going to start sanding down some of these rust spots. And then we're going to go in with some fiberglass sheets, um, cover all of the holes where the original flooring was put in. Um, they just drilled straight into the floor. I'm not going to do that. And we're going to spray over it with some Rust-Oleum. So update, it stopped snowing. Amazing, right? Um, here we got a back view, beautiful. Uh, I'm probably gonna go make some matcha because I'm a little tired. Um, and then we're gonna get it. All right, so it has been two days since I laid down my fiberglass sheets and resin. Um, because it is about 37 degrees almost every day here in Utah due to it being winter, it did take two full days for the resin to cure. But now that it's finally cured, I can go in and I can sand it down. That way the sheets are flush with the rest of the flooring. And then after that, I'll be priming the floor with some Rust-Oleum paint, um, just to give me a clean base that I can lay down my new subflooring. So here's a closer look at my paint job. I probably could have done a better job at sanding these down, but it doesn't matter all that much as long as those holes are covered. It's not the exact color of the van, but it doesn't really matter since we're gonna cover it up with the subfloor. So I'm still waiting for this to dry. It usually takes a whole 24 hours. And like I said, we're in Utah right now, so it's a little bit colder. It might take a little bit longer. Um, it's slightly tacky, so I'm going to wait for it to be fully dry, and then I'll start putting in the uh, fairing strips. And then after I put in the fairing strips, I can start putting in the insulation. I definitely forgot that I was going to put down some um, sound deadener on the bottom before I installed my subfloor. So it's a good thing I forgot to film because I almost didn't do this step. 
but basically I got some Tillamat off of Amazon. I don't really like to use Amazon, but I did have a gift card from a family member, so I thought, why not? Um, but yeah, basically just laying it down in all the areas that they recommend, and then I will finally be putting in my insulation and my subfloor. Okay, so I got this tiny microphone because I noticed there was a lot of wind coming in in a lot of my clips. So all of my kilomat is finally laid down. Um, just a note, anything that you're planning to do for your van conversion, your van build, is going to take longer than you expected it to. Uh, like this, for example, took about two and a half days total for me to lay all of it down, roll it out, and adhere it to the metal surface. So. Now that that's finally done, I'm going to start sticking in my fairing strips and measuring and cutting them so that I can create a base for my floor for my insulation to go in. So I'll have some going vertical and some going horizontal. So let's do it. working on the framework for the subfloor I guess I can introduce to you the um, insulation I decided to go with so uh, the first option that I picked out was Havelock wool um, there was like a multitude of reasons that I picked Havelock mostly uh, from what I was seeing on van life or YouTube was that a lot of people use polyiso uh, foam board or reflectix or um, even fiberglass fiberglass was the original insulation in here so I didn't want to go that route because I didn't want the possibility of me or my dog breathing in any of those particles um, it's also not moisture resistant so it is prone to molding and I didn't want to deal with like the vapor shield and all of that mess I like Havelock um, because it's environmentally friendly it's natural it's naturally moisture resistant and it actually has a pretty high R value also it's designed for hashtag van lifers so I went with that. I got two bats compressed into one. Uh, when I ordered it, they were on back order for about four to six weeks. I don't know if you know this, but if you look on YouTube, everyone and their mom got a van in 2020. Me included. So they, they actually were going through a lot of product at the time. I went with what I could afford. Um, it's for about 225 square feet. I wasn't sure when I started ripping everything out if this would be enough for all of the vans, so I got a second insulation. Again, I wanted to go for the environmentally friendly option, and this is one I hadn't really heard of. Um, I found like maybe two YouTubers that are, uh, had mentioned it, and they were from like the UK for their van build. They used uh, cork. Um, the company that I got mine from was called Small Planet Supply. Um, and it's, it's natural, it's 100% natural cork from a tree. Uh, it smells amazing, like I'm sitting here, it's, it's amazing, okay. It's about an inch thick, which is perfect for my fairing strips because they are also um, an inch thick. And I found out when I ordered them because the quantity was one, I wasn't sure what that meant, but I assumed for the price I was paying, it, it had to be more than one sheet. So when I got it in the mail, there were 12 sheets. I laid them out on my floor just to see around how many I would be using. And honestly, I could fit like probably eight on the floor in here. So um, I'll have more than enough. And if I have any extra, I can use it in combination with the Havelock wool. And yeah. All right, so this is the finished frame. All you need to do is take out all the fairing strips 
and sweep the floor so there's no debris and then glue it down with my liquid nails just a small detail here I had to drill this hole into this strip on the very end because the screw was part of the original flooring all the screws were actually originally drilled just straight into the metal and over time they ended up rusting like a lot so a lot of them I could not actually get out of the floor until I took a hammer and pried them up loosened them a bit this is the only one that actually could not come out so I decided to just leave it and put the fairing strip around it and drill that hole so that it would be flush with the flooring So I got my first piece of cork cut out. I started in with a utility knife, then reverted to my jigsaw because it was harder with the utility knife. So I finished it with the jigsaw up top, but it actually ended up chipping part of it. So I'm going to continue with the utility knife, even though it is more difficult. I found a process that works better for me. There's some like slight spacing in there, but I will fill that in with wool. As you can see here, it's about a quarter of an inch taller than the fairing strips. That's because I got one by two fairing strips and they always say one by two or two by two those not mean inches because they're actually um, three quarters of an inch by one and a half inches cork actually compresses so when I put the floor on top of it it will eventually level out so I'm not worried about that Here's what I've done so far. Um, tedious process, but worth it. I have I have a problem making eye contact with the camera. So since it started snowing again, I'm actually gonna take all of my cork inside and finish cutting uh, out all the floor pieces in there on my mom's kitchen floor. Thanks, mom. And then I'll come back out and lay them down in here. Hopefully the snow dies down a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna take this bat of sheep's wool and start tearing it apart and putting it in between the divots and then lay my cork on top of it. And just to show you today's makeup,
so I've started to hang up some nylon string on the ceiling and this is what's gonna hold my wool bats in uh, until I can put the ceiling and the walls on because I'm having a hard time um, trying to figure out how to fit the string through these holes that were previously in here that was my plan I'm honestly just gonna use some tape it's gonna look a little janky but I guess it doesn't matter because it's gonna be covered up all right, so we're back with the build. I took a break because the last time when I was trying to put the insulation in, I got so upset that I quit. And it's been about three, maybe four days since I actually filmed or did anything on the van. One, it's been cold and snowing. Two, I've been a terrible student. I have not done any of my homework since working on this thing. So I took a few days break, did some homework, and now I'm back to it. So today we're gonna try to put in some furring strips on the walls that way it'll make the insulation of the insulation easier because I tried to do it with tape and string and it just it's a no but I should have known but you know we're we're here. So today I called in a second pair of hands because I only have two. So yeah we're gonna try to put some strips in. Alright, here's what we got going on right now. You're probably thinking, B, why are you like bouncing around and being so sporadic about this? Like you should finish the floor, then start on the walls, then do the bed, then do this. Th I, I, my brain doesn't work that way. I can't do that, okay? Um, <laughs> I have to bounce back and forth and just pretend I'm doing everything at once. Because that's how I am. I did finally fully insulate the floor. Look at that. Everything is in, it's all covered, even cut out these little areas, boom. So this is what I'm gonna install for the subfloor before I put whatever I decide to put on after that. I bought these pallets from this guy that I found on Craigslist. He was selling them for like five bucks a piece, so I bought five of them, he gave me one for free. Sick. So I'm actually cutting these out and I'm gonna place this for my subfloor and then, you know, I'll caulk the cracks up so nothing seeps in there and then I'm still trying to decide what I want for my flooring like do I want vinyl do I want WPC vinyl I don't know yet okay and then I did something the other day that I thought I wasn't gonna do but I did it anyway because I was like you know what I have a fur baby I have to think about him I was not gonna get a fan until like later on I was like I don't need it but then I thought well you know, I have a fur baby, I'll be cooking in the van, it's gonna be hot and soak out, like, I'm gonna need exhaust, and what is that called? Airflow. I'm gonna need airflow, okay? So, here's what I did. I cut out 14 by 14 square, taped it on the spot that I'm gonna put it on. This is gonna be the bed, and that's gonna be the kitchen, so it's gonna be right in between them for the perfect little placement. I could center it, but we don't do that here. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do that. Uh, and then I did something else. I went on and I bought hemp wool. And if you don't know what that is, it's, it's wool. It's hemp. It's hemp. Insulation, which is also moisture resistant, also has a great R value, also eco-friendly. <laughs> so we have now three types of insulation. Not only that, I bought, <laughs> I bought Reflectix to put it in the windshield. Uh, I have a huge roll of that left, so I thought... Might as well use the rest of that too. So we are using four types of insulation in this van. This bitch is gonna be insulated. That's where we're at.
So here you can see that I'm just taking the wool in like small little tufts and sticking it into the ribs on the side of the van. I finished that side over there and then the ceiling bats will just tuck right in. Um, and so I'm going to do this side here and I'll start working on the doors. So the Reflectix is up. That was just more of an add-on, an extra, just because I had it and I thought, why not? And by the way, if anybody has any tips of how to like use this properly, like I read the directions, six to eight inches away, spray this shit. I mean, I can't really have the door open because it's super windy. I don't know if you can hear that, um, but it keeps pushing my door closed and it's really hard to get anything done if I have the sliding door open with all the wind coming in. Um, I am sticky all over like all over i can feel it in my nostrils definitely not good but we're here hey everyone it's b um i just wanted to say if you made it this far in the video thank you so much for watching this is going to be part one of my van build this was my first time making a youtube video so i had thought of doing a van build series but i thought you know i don't know how much i'm actually going to be filming this of just you know time lapse here and there i you know i didn't know what the editing process was going to be like so this was a test run really and uh i'm breaking it into two parts because i figured that's um much more easy watching than one long 40 minute video i know that's like a big commitment and this is not this is not a how-to this is just showing you how I did it and this has been like months and months of research after already living in my van if you liked it you know stick around for part two it'll be up in a couple of weeks um, and I'll actually finish the build out what you can expect to see there will be the fan install uh, obviously the floor will finally be finished as you can see I cut all the pieces out finally um, so I'll build the bed frame uh, wall ceiling that stuff go on decoration final touches whatnot if you liked this video you know click some buttons below leave me some words leave me some sentences comments questions concerns uh, what are those called uh, criticisms you know what I could have done better what do you want to see and there will be some vlogs in the future I'd uh, it's, it'll be van life but I also do uh, secondhand clothing sales so if you liked any of my outfits that I'm wearing in any of my videos I will be selling like a lot of my clothes while I'm on the road so if you want to you know get into that remember if you liked this video give me some of these give me some of those if you want you know it's your world uh, hit that big red button if you want to stick around and you know follow me on this little journey we got going on here and yeah i'll see you guys in the next video